In Oklahoma, there is only one chair like this. It belongs to, is used by one man, the chief executive. It belongs to the governor of Oklahoma. Since 1907, when Oklahoma became a state, 18 men have been elected to the governor's chair. 17 have been Democrats. One, a Republican. This is a story of that first Republican, Henry Bellman, a document of the first and most memorable day of his term in office. This is day of inauguration 1963. January 14th began early for Henry Bellman. Following pre-dawn church services, the governor-elect is met at an Oklahoma City motel. The long day of official ceremonies and festivities begins. The motorcade carries the former noble county farmer to the expectant crowds in the downtown streets of the capital city. There, the inaugural parade awaits. Despite a chilling wind and below freezing temperatures, the morning is filled with bright sunshine. The streets lined with thousands of well-wishers on hand to honor their new governor. The official reviewing stand overlooks the parade route. Bellman's daughter, Pat, a drum majorette, leads her hometown high school marching band. People have come from every corner of Oklahoma, but none so proud as the delegation from Noble County. Come to celebrate the day with their most respected citizen, their favorite son, the farmer rancher who changed the voting patterns of an entire state. A man with a strong belief in the two-party system of politics. Bellman is very soon to be inaugurated as Oklahoma's first Republican governor in 55 years of statehood. He breaks other molds set by previous men as well. The typical Oklahoma governor in the past was a well-to-do attorney born in another state who won the in his late 40s or early 50s. But this man is different. A native Oklahoma farmer of moderate means, barely 41 years of age. Later, at the Capitol building, the inauguration itself is about to begin. Hot coffee is poured as the time draws near. Live television cameras await. All ages prepare. At precisely noon, Governor-elect Bellman and outgoing Governor Nye arrive on the South Capitol steps. The crowd rises for the national anthem. Bellman and Nye stand at attention. Nye has been governor for only nine days. As former lieutenant governor under the previous administration, he took over this office when Governor Edmondson resigned and was appointed to the U.S. Senate following the sudden death of Senator Robert S. Kern earlier in the month. Throngs of guests and spectators fill the Capitol steps, both Democrats and Republicans, over 5,000 Oklahomans. The inaugural ceremonies have begun. Bellman and Nye pledge their American allegiance. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
hatless and smiling, they descend through an applauding audience. On Bellman's inaugural platform below, four former Oklahoma governors await the new chief executive. Henry Johnson, W.J. Holloway, Johnston Murray, and Raymond Gary. Warmly greeted, they take their official positions. Bert McElroy, master of ceremonies, begins the program. Call upon the Reverend Douglas V. Majors, Senate Executive. The Bellman. The Senate of Oklahoma and Arkansas. Long awaited moment. United Presbyterian Church, USA, to lead us in the invitation. Dr. Majors. Let us pray. Our Father, we would begin this day of inauguration. Dr. Douglas Majors delivers the inaugural invocation. With confidence to the future. Amen. Patient anticipation. A special kind of pride. McElroy, a state Republican committeeman, introduces Governor Nye who, in his last United official United act, Court presents Court federal Court judge Court Ross Rizzo. Will turn and administer the oath of office to Mr. Bowe. Governor I. I have the privilege of formally presenting to Justice Risley, Governor of the State of Oklahoma, to be Donald Henry Judge Risley calls Bellman to the speaker's <laughs> roster. Oath of office is administered. Governor elect, uh, Governor elect Belvin, will you place, please place your left hand on the open Bible before you and raise your right hand to heaven. Repeat your name and repeat after me. I, Henry Belvin, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. I will support obey and defend, obey and defend the, Constitution of the, United States the Constitution of the United States and the State of Oklahoma, and, the State of Oklahoma. and will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity, and will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. That I have not paid, that I have not paid or contributed, or contributed either directly or indirectly, either directly or indirectly, any money. Any money or other valuable thing, or other valuable thing, to procure my nomination or election, to procure my nomination or election, except Bellman pledges to uphold the state and federal and constitutions and, and to govern with integrity, with dignity, to carry out the duties prescribed by his office, to serve all Oklahomans. And without mental reservation or self evasion. And without mental reservation or self evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Ten minutes past noon this 14th day of January 1963, Oklahoma has its first Republican governor. Bellman smiles. Cameras click. Handshakes are exchanged. Leo, if you will, place your left hand on the Bible. Lieutenant Governor Leo Winters is now sworn in. Leo Winters. Chief I, Justice Leo Winters, Ben Williams administers the oath. Winters will be the top Democrat at the Capitol. But I will support Oklahoma receives the balance of the two-party system. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. And will discharge the duty state. that I have not knowingly violated any election law of the state. Directly. That I will not knowingly receive, directly or indirectly, any money or other valuable thing. I have a lieutenant governor. Congratulations, please. <laughs> Bellman stands before the citizens of Oklahoma. Governor Henry Bellman. 
And just, just as we all get comfortable, I'm used to making long political speeches. <laughs> the inauguration is impressive. This is the day. This is the moment. New regime is being launched. New blood. New ideas. And historic change in government. This is Henry Bellman's first official act. And the day has all the significance of the coronation of a king or a queen. But the difference lies in the fact that those he addresses are not his subjects. Far from it. For he has now become theirs. He has agreed to serve. To make his private life a public one. Now and for the four years which lie ahead. Bellman is quick to point out that the best government does only those things that individuals cannot do alone. He calls for all Oklahomans to participate in the affairs of government, pledges that his administration will keep faith with promises he made the voters in the long days of campaigning before the election. Finally, he asks for divine guidance. To all who would truly serve thee, show us thy way and give us the strength to do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A new era in Oklahoma history has begun. Hats are removed in reverence. The inauguration is concluded in prayer. The ceremony is complete. The new governor makes his way to leave. Former Governor Johnston, also from Noble County, 91 years old, but the weather, though chilly, has not prevented his attendance here today. Blue Room of the Capitol, a time of congratulation. Governor Bellman, Lieutenant Governor Winters receiving the public they will now represent. The reception begins at one o'clock. The old and the young, the rich and the poor. Congratulations from all of Oklahoma. Over 3,000 people file through to meet the new governor many calling him by his first name. At four o'clock, Bellman is still shaking hands, although by this time his own is sore and bleeding. But the day is far from over. Soon after the reception, the Bellmans appear at the municipal auditorium for the Republican Spectacular. Familiar faces in Oklahoma politics. Here, 4,000 state Republicans have gathered to celebrate the occasion of their new governor. The first man in history to carry their party to the state's highest office. The Bellmans are escorted to the stage. Smiles, applause, handshakes. The entire family receives a standing ovation. A proud day for the Republican Party. Months of long, hard labor are culminated in the joy of victory. The thousands who worked for this victory are thanked. The man who made it a reality is honored. For the next two and a half hours, the audience is entertained. Some of the nation's top movie and television talent. Comedians Charlie Weaver and Alan Young, 
the singing Lennon sister. Gordon McRae. Professional acrobats. Finally, McRae sings the title song from the hit, Oklahoma, now the official state song. As night falls, a return to the Capitol. Here, the reception for the legislators and their wives is in progress. Soon, the governor and his wife will host the great inaugural ball, the first to be held in the Capitol since World War II. Wishing to dissolve the mystery which so often surrounds politics and the lives of politicians, Bellman has decided to make the ball a public one, open and free of admission for all Oklahomans. It is 8.30. The governor and the first lady lead the grand march up the stairs through a guard of honor. The first dance, a chance to relax momentarily. The capital is overflowing. Over 25,000 have accepted the new governor's unusual invitation to attend. It has been a very special day in the life of Henry Bell. The days which lie ahead will be special too. Days of enormous responsibility for the new chief administrator. He will have to face many problems. Education, welfare of the citizens, new highways, human rights, public safety, jobs for the working man, economic, agricultural, and tourist development. Legislation of all kinds will cross his desk. The next four years will be very busy ones. These will be the Bellman years. This chair is now his. He will long remember the time he spends in it. Long remember that he first came to sit here on the day of inauguration, 1963.